Then um, we also had talk in each, each morning meet, meeting. We talk about uh, the eight waste, overproduction, transportation, uh, inventory, defects, excess processing, motion, waiting, and uh, non-utilized talent or lost learning opportunities, as, as I'd like to call the, the, the eighth one. Um, today, I want to focus about uh, 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 non-utilized talent or lost learning opportunities, um, where um, um, I'd like to explain a bit more, again, what is uh, what is waste, but also explain about the 14 principles of the Toyota way. So what is lean? Um, it's actually very simple. Uh, there are a lot of tools and there's a lot of uh, literature and there's a lot of uh, 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 the things being said about lean, and uh, those are also true. But the most essential part about le lean is learning to see waste in your processes, those eight ways, and uh, eliminating it to continue small improvements. So it's not a huge change, it's not a big change, but many small improvements eventually make a big change. And uh, it's good to understand that most business processes are 90% waste and only 10% value added work. And when are you adding value? It's when you're physically changing uh, the product uh, for the customer. And the customer always uh, is, is number one. The customer always has the focus. Um, and I did actually a, uh, a presentation, I think two years ago, about the 14 uh, principles of the Toyota Way. Um, I have a, a book which anybody can also have. I've got a couple of spare copies uh, of the uh, second edition of the Toyota Way. It's a very nice book. Uh, to read when you're, you know, sitting on a plane or having, you know, a coffee in the weekend on the couch or something, um, and uh, it distills down 14 principles. Uh, and yeah, I put them on the slides and like share them with you. Um, the number one principle for me that's a, a nice one: uh, base your management decisions on long-term philosophy, even at the expense of short-term uh, uh, financial goals. And I think since we uh, started lean. I've also applied this uh, this sort of decision making process quite a lot, and it's has been has been very very helpful. Um, and um, sometimes when you get stuck at only chasing short term financial uh, goals, you lose sight of the long term uh, uh, long term goal, and that hurts you uh, in the end. You want to generate value uh, for the customer, uh, but also think five to ten years ahead of uh, where we want to be as a company and base our management decisions uh, on, on that. And um, principle number two is create continuous process flow to bring problems to the surface. Uh, working in batches versus continuous flow, that principle has been applied in so many companies worldwide and has so much success also here, because we used to produce a lot of batches of machines. We say, I made five SAMs and four MOMs and uh, and let's put them in order so we can deliver on time because our lead time is so low. And uh, when we change from that uh, push-based batch process to a pool-based continuous flow pro process, what we do now with the Kanban machines, and what we also will do uh, uh, with, uh, for example, the upside downs and, uh, and the pumps, is uh, it, it really reduces a lot of waste also from the process if you go from a batch uh, to a continuous flow. Batch you need to store. If you make a batch, you can have, if you have a defect, then you have then all your uh, part, then you need to do exit processing, et cetera. So um, you really want to create flow to reduce as much waste as possible um, and make that evident to our organizational culture. So like I said, use cool systems to avoid overproduction. Overproduction is a waste. Um, and if you overproduce, make, like say, those excess machines or parts you have to store them somewhere. It is also again, and you have to handle them. You have to put, put them in a box. You have to check the inventory. Um, and uh, also, again, nice principle. Leveling out the workload, what we did with uh, the Kanban system and the tech time. So the tech time is how many uh, days it takes on average uh, uh, to deliver a machine. Uh, we calculated for the Kanban, for the HF machines, that this is every uh, two days So we base now. Every two days, we, uh, or at least we try uh, to have a machine coming out instead of at the end of the month having five machines ready or 10 machines ready. Um, and then you don't have to run, do overtime. And then uh, when uh, everything is shipped, you take easy again. Now we make it a very stable, uh, uh, continuous uh, process. Um, Hidoka, principle number five building a culture to uh, stop the fixed problems to get quality right the first time. Um, Dwayne, you've been, done a lot of that uh, uh, to teach them, train the guys, uh, but everybody has that 
uh, a potential and 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 um, opportunity to say if something is not right, we stop, uh, and we we fix our immediate problem, um, and also fix the root cause or find and fix the root cause of the problem, and that's how we can get better as an organization. Also in uh, TechSleep, we started this uh, uh, last year, and that has also had really good results so far, uh, and it's never finished, um, and we continuously uh, keep improving. Principle number six, standardized tasks are the foundation for continuous improvement and, and employee empowerment. Always a nice uh, example is the IKEA uh, uh, manual. Uh, but basically, time spent on guesswork is time wasted. So when you're standing at the machine uh, trying to calibrate it or something, you don't know exactly how it's done. Uh, when you're in the field, and, and that's uh, also part of the reason why everybody's here uh, for training now. Uh, I've done it myself. I spent years in the field. I spent years in the workshop uh, finishing machines, and I'd be something like, "How the hell do I? How do I? How do I do this?" And if you make sure things are are standardized, uh, and not only from a machine perspective, also from a process uh, perspective. Uh, even finance, uh, uh, invoicing, order entry. As long as those tasks are standardized, you don't have to guess. And then uh, you don't waste your time. Uh, okay. um, use visual control so no problems are hidden. This really was us uh, five years ago. Uh, and <laughs> sometimes it still is a little bit, but we made a huge step. Um, uh, both here and in, uh, and in Romania, uh, there were Parts everywhere, boxes everywhere, everything was a mess. And uh, yeah, the team here and the team in Cluj did a fantastic job to uh, uh, to improve. And again, it's never never finished. Uh, but visual control, visual systems, uh, uh, the smallest example, lines on the floor, a dedicated places where things are supposed to be, and also making sure that uh, tools and parts that we use are always to be found in the right location where they should be. Um, because again. You don't spend then time searching. Um, use only uh, principle number eight is use only reliable, thoroughly tested technology uh, that serves your people and processes. So when we are improving our business, when we are um, finding new production techniques, what we really need to always remember is that we uh, take the time to really evaluate and uh, and test technology and then implement rapidly. Uh, so conducting a lot of tests, a lot of this has to do also with, with tech leads, but also AV, new parts, new suppliers, uh, uh, new technologies. Uh, we want to test them and make sure that they are 100% okay. And then once we know that they're okay, we implement uh, quickly. Um, grow leaders who thoroughly understand the work, live the philosophy, and teach it to others. I'm a huge fan of getting people in from university schools as interns. Um, and, uh, and graduates, and then uh, eventually uh, uh, the, the the right people, uh, if they fit the company and uh, and the other way around, uh, try to get them on board and grow people from when they are uh, um, young. And I think if you look around you, half of the people here are, uh, let's say, under 30. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and many managers also uh, started this way, but uh, yeah, this. Um, so much we've achieved uh, with uh, an incredibly uh, uh, motivated, uh, but also young, nice team. And, and if you look around, you can you can see that uh, really. Um, and that's the way we will continue to grow. Uh, uh, the and principle number ten ties into that: develop exceptional people and teams who follow your company's philosophy, uh, creating a strong and stable culture uh, in which your company believes your values are widely shared. Which is what I'm trying to do now also, uh, um, and uh, uh, we keep training uh, and continuously looking for new people and exceptional people uh, to grow the company together. Respect your network of partners and supplier, supplier by challenging them and helping them to improve. Also important, um, we shouldn't, uh, let's say, uh, in the past what we did, ah, supplier is not good, we, we say thanks, but no thanks, we go to another supplier. Uh, philosophy is that we try to um, help our suppliers also to improve, and not only for them as a supplier, but as a partner. Um, same way it goes with with, with customers, uh, also in the lean philosophies and being on site. We try to be more of a consultant uh, instead of uh, selling them something, uh, and to really help them in the uh, in, in the process. Um, 
principle 12, one of my favorites, go and see for yourself. So go to the shop floor or go to the customer to see and thoroughly understand the situation if there is a problem. Uh, spending the time with people on the floor, uh, spending the time with the people in the office, um, really, uh, and that's called Genshin Genbutsu, uh, also again a Japanese uh, term, uh, and think and speak personally based on what you have seen and know. Making decisions uh, uh, slowly by consensus, that's number principle number 13, thoroughly considering all options and talking this again with your teammates, team members, uh, and customers. Um, this applies to many different uh, aspects of the business as well, internal processes, uh, but also developments of new, uh, new equipment, for example. Um, and principle number 14, the last one, become a learning organization through relentless reflection and continuous improvement. So rigorously uh, improve everything continuously. If something is wrong, stop and correct it. Fix the budget, essentially. Empower everyone to take part in problem solving. Everybody here in this uh, uh, room now is a problem solver and can help us to solve problems and each other. Um, get information and opinions from multiple people. We're not only deciding top down, this is what we're going to do, uh, but it's team effort. Yeah. Um, before making decisions, ask why five times. Uh, we said this a number of times, uh, but it's always nice to, to remember the five why method is a very important one. And it sometimes even gets annoying because I'll be like, why? Okay, but uh, why? And it always works, it always works. Um, be economical, so use your uh, mind, not your wallet. Uh, save money through small improvements. Don't throw money at things and hire expensive consultants. And uh, no, let's work on our creativity and having uh, our creativity help us solve the problems instead of spending a lot of money. Um, and remember that improvement has no limits. Never stop trying to improve. This is all coming from Toyota, who has this uh, the Toyota way already implemented for uh, what, 60, 70 years. They still make millions of improvements every every year yeah, all, all over the world. Um, and use Hansei reflection and key milestones after you finish the project. We could do a lot better at that uh, because yeah, I, I tend to just, OK, great, we did this. But let's go on to the next. Uh, uh, so this is actually really good to read. Um, to uh, openly identify all the shortcomings of the project and develop countermeasures to avoid the same mistakes again, uh, tying into the eight ways of uh, a lost learning opportunity. Um, so maybe a long presentation today, but I wanted to, I, I was still filtering through my my old morning meetings and I saw this and said, okay, we have this nice group of people here. So let's, uh, let's go through this again. And uh, well, again, thank you everybody for, uh, for being here. We're gonna have a, a great, uh, a great time these weeks. So thanks so much. Have a great day.